good morning. I just want to take this time out to welcome you to our online virtual sanctuary. Zion and I are so excited, so elated to be here. I pray and I know that God is going to bless you today. You want to know how I know? Because the Bible says with two or three are gathered in my name, there the Spirit of the Lord is, there God is there. Uh, you want to know how I know you're going to be blessed today? Because the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. It literally suggesting to us that when we begin to praise God, even virtually, that God is in our homes. He's right there where you are. Zion and I are so excited. We're so elated to welcome you to our online service. I pray that you're blessed today. As a matter of fact, let us jump into our online service today. But right before we get into it, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for just waking us up this morning. We're so excited. We're so elated. We know that you're going to do something special. Even in these times like these, we know that you're still speaking. So God, we welcome you. We honor you. We praise you. And we just pray today that none of us here will leave here the same. Our prayer today is that we would have heard the preach word, been changed by it, we would have been encouraged by the song, and we would have been comforted by the prayers. So God bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. Well, why don't you join us in singing the hymn of the morning today, which is Blessed Assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Sing with us as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. what you're going through, that God is still on the throne, God is still on your side, God is still the constant thing in your life. Yes, we have the assurance that Jesus is ours. 
Well, it is time for Pastor's Corner, and I just have a few announcements right before I get out of your way so we can continue to worship God in spirit and in truth. Guys, remember on Tuesdays, Power Up Tuesday, that never changes. Every Tuesday, every hour on the hour from the time you rise up until noonday, we're praying and we're fasting because we are a church that believes that when we pray and we fast, that God moves, God speaks. God begins to do something that only the Lord can do. The mountains begin to move. Strongholds begin to break. Everything happens when God moves and speaks because we pray and we fast. So every hour on the hour from the time you rise up, we'll fast and we'll pray until noonday. So join us as we fast and we pray. Also join us at Wednesday Connect as we study the Word of God. We just finished one lesson entitled God's Four H's for You. And guess what? We're about to go even deeper. So guys, join us this coming Wednesday as Dr. Harris leads us into our new series actually entitled Deeper. Because we're going to be going deeper into the Word of God, deeper into our relationship with God because we want to be deep into our Christianity, into our word, and into our relationship so that nothing can shake or move us when things become unstable and when the world is in chaos. Join us on Wednesday via Zoom as we go deeper. Church family, it is with great sadness to announce the passing of Sister Sherry Green's mother. Sister Sherry Green's mother who passed away on Monday. And we want you guys to reach out to Sister Green and let her know that we love her, we care about her, and we are with her and we're praying for her during time like this in her grieving of her mother. Sister Green, if you're watching this, on behalf of the pastoral staff, we want you to know that we love you, we care for you, and we're praying tremendously and deeply for you. Know that God is with you. He has sent his Holy Spirit to come for you, and he's promised that he will do that. The funeral services will be on Monday. All the information you should have received, but if you need it, just contact our church offices and our church secretary will be sure to get it to you. It will be Monday, this coming Monday. So just contact our church offices or look on your email, and I promise that you will have it. Well, it is that time that we do celebrate. I am excited that we do celebrate our birthdays. Listen, listen, I know that this year's birthdays are just different. I celebrated a birthday as well, and you know, it was different. It was weird. It was awkward. We couldn't go out. We couldn't do certain things. But here's the good news. You are still alive. Yes, 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 I know what it looks like out there, but here's the good news. You are still alive one more day, one more year, one more minute, and I want to just praise God for you. So I just want to say to you, happy birthday. We love you, we praise God for you, and we pray that God will continue to bless you with another year. When we get back into our worship service, into our sanctuary, our physical sanctuary, then we're going to celebrate all the birthdays from the time that we have been missing church virtually and, I mean, um, physically. We're going to worship God and celebrate the birthdays that we've missed. In addition to that, I do want to celebrate all of the wedding anniversaries that have taken place today or this past week. Listen, weddings are beautiful things. Another um, landmark of another year in a marriage is a beautiful thing. And we want to just celebrate you and what God is doing through you and for you in your, in your marriage. So happy anniversary to you all. You know, if we were at DuPont Park, we would have just told you to stand up out of your feet and kiss, and we would have celebrated you and praised God for you. But why don't you do me a favor right now, right where you are, find your husband, find your boo, find your wife, and you're going to kiss right now, virtually, right now. I see you, yes, right there. Give him that beautiful kiss. That was beautiful. Praise God for you. Happy anniversary. And we pray that God will bless you with many, many more. Children, it's now time for your children's story. So I would encourage you to come on closer to the screen as you now receive your story, because it's your time. So come closer to the iPad, to the TV, to the phone, and hear what God has to say to you today. Right, time.
right? Tell them to come closer. God's story. God made people. So part of God's story is about how he made people. And it goes like this. The very beginning of time, God made the world. And he did it just by speaking. He made the blue sky and planets with rings and galaxies exploding with stars. He made puffy clouds and dry land and sparkling water. He covered the earth with deserts and mountains and planted forests and jungles. He sprinkled the world with flowers and bugs and birds and fish and animals of all kinds. It was a perfect home, full of fun creatures. And God called all of it good. But he wasn't done creating yet. God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. This time, though, God didn't just speak. First, he took some dust from the ground. Then he breathed into the dust with his own breath. By doing that, he created the very first person, a man called Adam. God put Adam in an amazing garden called Eden. But Adam was different than the other living creatures God had made. In fact, God put Adam in charge of everything else. But Adam needed a friend. So the Bible says that God caused him to fall into a deep sleep. While Adam was sleeping, God made a woman from one of Adam's ribs. Her name was Eve. And she and Adam were free to live happily in the garden where they could walk and talk with God. It was perfect. Once Adam and Eve were together caring for the garden, God didn't just call the world good, he called it very good. See, people are God's favorite. Remember, we were made in his own image, in his likeness. The Bible says, God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. We don't know exactly what it means to be created in God's image. But we do know it means he made us like him. So our eyes, our skin, our teeth, our bones are perfectly crafted by God. Our personalities, our sense of humor, our sensitivities, our hobbies, our talents, everything is made by God so that we can be like him. And we have abilities that none of the animals have. We can paint pictures and write poems. We can solve math problems, explain what we're thinking, and invent cool new things. Whether we like to run, teach, build, or anything else, God understands us. Of course, we don't always act perfectly, but that's another part of the story. When God made Adam and Eve, he crafted them in his image. He made them, and us, like him. And that's the story of how God made people.
Church family, it is now prayer time. And I'm going to ask at this time, even right where you are, you will either bow your head with me or take the appropriate prayer posture as we go to God in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you for this life that you've given us. Thank you for your mercies, which are new every morning. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for leading us. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for being a God who is faithful, even when we're unfaithful to ourselves. Thank you for being a God who just will not ever leave us because you promised us that. God, thank you for who you are. God, you know the times that we live in. You know the things that we're going through. You know the pains that we're dealing with. You know the heartaches that we're experiencing. You know the mental anguishes that we are constantly dealing with privately. You know the battles that we deal with at work and home. You know the uncertainty that is covering and hovering over our houses, over our minds. God, you know every single thing. And I'm so glad that you're a God who's not caught off guard, who's not worried, who's not scrambling around to find or seek what to do. But God, you are still in control. God, we knew your word said that in the end times, things are going to be crazy. There are going to be fires everywhere, earthquakes everywhere, famine and rumors of wars and wars. We're going to be dealing with so many things. But God, we didn't anticipate this. But you told us. So we would trust you. God, in the name of Jesus, today I pray for each and every person who's watching the stream. Whether they're watching it live or following through, God, I pray for our church members. I pray for our parents who are dealing with the new normal of their kids going to school. I pray for their sanity. I pray for their strength. I pray for our teachers. I pray, God, that you will continue to move, continue to lead, continue to guide as we are now doing things differently. God, I pray even, God, for the parents. I pray for the marriages. I pray for our men, our women, our children. God, I pray for our church. I pray for our leadership. I pray for our nation, God. God, I pray for this election. I pray in the name of Jesus that, God, you will continue to be who you are. I know your word says you will never change. You will never leave us. You cannot lie. So, God, we thank you and we praise you. Forgive us for our sins, O oh God. Forgive us for our shortcomings. Lord, you know who we are. You know how sinful we can be and how sinful we are. Please forgive us because when all is said and done, after we've seen all the warning signs, I really do pray, God, our names will be written in the book of life because as we've seen in the last couple of months, life is really not promised. So I pray that each and every person who's watching this, member, visitor, may live life knowing that it's not promised and that there is sin to be another life. Be with us and bless us. I pray for the preach word that God, you will pierce the hearts of your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. <laughs>
friends and family who have joined us on this beautiful and marvelous Sabbath morning. Surely the Lord has blessed us. And once again, we can say this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. It's good to be glad and happy in the Lord. May God continue to bless you and yours and keep you safe during these times. We are so thankful that you've been with us. And as we continue on with our summer preaching series, New Start 2020. We are now uh, getting ready to look at law number seven, the law of rest. And why don't you bow your heads with me as we seek the Lord's presence and ask for his blessings and mercy over us at this time. Loving God, we thank you so much once again for all that you do, 
all that you have done and all that you are doing. We thank you so much, oh God, that you are interested in everything that concerns our life and our living. As we continue on our New Start journey, we pray that you will draw us into a marvelous transition where we're living life abundantly and more fully in you. Bless the word today, I pray. May each and every one who hears be drawn into a love covenant and relationship with you. For you are our God. I ask and pray these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I ask you to say with me, amen and amen. Uh, law number seven rest. I um, would include myself in the number for there are some who find themselves dealing with the impact of our particularly busy lifestyle and even more so with the challenges of the current pandemic. When we were talking about being quarantined and having to stay at home, the immediate thoughts came to my mind was that we would have less to do, that there would be less stress on our life, that our activities would slow down. But that is far from the truth. I must admit to you and I must tell you that it appears that activity has picked up. And yes, there is a certain sense of stress and pressure that comes with this pandemic. Our lives are in a place where we can, can get to, to a state where we feel tired. We feel drained and sometimes we can feel tired and drained all of the time our schedules and our obligations, our routines, and God forbid that we, we find ourselves not knowing what to do when we don't know what to do. And even with the transition of the new school year, our parents and teachers and students are trying to learn how to deal with this new normal of being uh, virtually taught and learning virtually without having the connectivity of social uh, 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 presence in a classroom or with a teacher. Our schedules and obligations, our routines, our life demands, sometimes even our bad choices send us to a place where we are tired, stretched out, and stress. There was an old song that was uh, uh, used to be performed by the Temptations that simply said that the world is a ball of confusion. Evolution, revolution, gun control, sound of soul. So round and around and around we go where the world's headed. Nobody knows. Fear is in the air. Tension everywhere. Unemployment rising fast. Mod clothes in demand. Population out of hand. Suicide. Too many pills. Hippies moving to the hills. People all over the world are shouting in the war. Eve of destruction. Tax deduction, city inspectors, bill com collectors, ball of confusion. That's what the world is today, and the band played on. We are in a situation where we are almost wound up all of the time. We are tight all of the time. Common terms begin to play out in our lives. Uh, we will find ourselves talking about being in a rat race or feeling like a hamster that's continually running on a wheel, in a hamster wheel. We're burning the candle on both ends of the, the stick. We are running around in circles. We, we will cry out, I'm drained, I'm spent. And I have had occasion from time to time to simply declare somebody stick a fork in me because I am done. The ever ready bunny doctrine is a lie. We cannot, we do not simply just go on and on and on with this unlimited supply of, of energy and power and strength. When we are living, when we are producing, when we are involved, when we are in activity, there is a drain on our bodies. We get tired. We'll find ourselves fatigued, feeling like we need to reboot, to recoup, to refill. And I simply want to tell you that all of this and all of that is a natural outcome from living. 
being engaged in your life, moving through your obligations and your responsibilities from hour to hour, from day to day, from appointment to appointment, from Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting, from simply just doing things that keep life moving on a steady course. And when we are living, when we are active, we get tired. I say when we are living, not if we're just existing. Rest only comes or is necessary when we have been active physically, mentally, and spiritually. If you're not doing anything, you won't be tired, but you may feel a little lethargic. You may feel a little just down, but being tired comes when you have put in some work, you have been engaged, you are connected with life. So here's my focus point. I want you to hold this, keep this. Because we are divinely designed to be active, to work, to be productive, to be engaged, we are also divinely designed to rest. Ah, we give ourselves permission to rest because it's natural to rest. Resting is natural or a natural need after we have been engaged and moving through our life activities. Because of our intemperance, and we talked about temperance so on last week, but because of our intemperance, the lack of balance, we will quickly and oftentimes find ourselves trying to squeeze in more day than the hours permit, and we neglect to do the healthy thing. We neglect to get our rest. Have you ever heard of Sid? Uh, the systemic exertion intolerance disease. Maybe CFS is more familiar to you, uh, that chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, health officials tell us they're not really sure and they're, they're not, uh, they don't have a universal conclusion as to where chronic fatigue syndrome comes from. But they believe that the answer may rest, that there rest in this notion that there is the onset of viral infections all the way through the gamut of psychological stress. Somewhere in between that continuum, we will find the set off, the trigger for this thing called chronic fatigue syndrome, where you just feel drained and tired, like you just can't make it, that each leg is becoming heavier and heavier, and, and each step becomes more labored than the last one. Uh, in this syndrome, which might be triggered by a combination of factors, there is no known single test to confirm the diagnosis of, of chronic fatigue syndrome, but you know it when you see it, you'll know it when you feel it. Let me also say this, that Ellen White talks about this thing about getting rest and, and getting our bodies revived and rejuvenated. She says in Councils on Health, beginning with page 327, how much the faithful physician needs the sympathy and prayers of the people of God. Talking about our doctors. His claims in this direction are not inferior to those of the most devoted minister or missionary worker. Deprived as he often is of needed rest and sleep and even of religious uh, uh, privileges on the Sabbath. So our doctors are so busy that the Sabbath rest becomes something that they are unable to uh, have. And when they find themselves in this position, she says, they need a double portion of grace. She goes on to say the burden of labor is very taxing to mind and heart. We, uh, the one who is working cannot keep up the strain continuously without wearing out permanently. Those who are engaged in constant mental labor, whether in study or preaching, need rest and change 
The earnest student is constantly taxing the brain too often while neglecting physical exercise and the result, the bodily powers are enfeebled and mental effort is restricted. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that we need rest. We need rest. We need the opportunity to reboot and to readjust our system. So the simple, the simple admonition to you today is we all need to get our rest. Well, how do we do that, preacher? How do we get rest? I know we can talk about it, but how do we actually do it? I'm going to give you about four elements to look at as we try to come to balance with this thing called rest. First of all, first of all, and primarily, the need that many of us have and the, the thing that many of us are neglecting is the, the opportunity or taking a time simply to go to sleep. It is known that sleep, sleep, the simple, sleep allows the body and the brain to replenish energy and repair itself in critical ways. Did you not know that memory also has a, a impact, an impact on memory processing? When you sleep, it also impacts physical growth. When you sleep, it also has an impact on muscle repair. Sleep is also critical for strengthening the immune system and allowing the body to fight diseases. How much sleep do we need? The debate goes on and on, but the standard is a good eight hours will do your soul and your body well. Get good sleep. Get sleep that will uh, take you through the night. Darken the room so you can begin to shut off your mind and your attention. Get sleep at a regular time. I know I'm, I'm guilty of this. I'll go to sleep at all hours and all uh, odd times of the day. Uh, it's almost, I'll sneak it in when I can. But we do ourselves well when we sleep on a regular schedule. And here's a tip. Here's uh, uh, an area where you can give yourself permission. If you cannot or you fail to get the sleep you need, there's a three-letter word that when we were in kindergarten, we were so filled with energy that we thought we were being punished. But I wish somebody would come and make me and tell me and, and, and require me to take a nap. Oh my God. To be able to take a nap in the middle of the day. It doesn't have to be a long nap. In fact, uh, scientists tell us that the shorter, we get what we call a power nap, about 15, 20, 25 minutes. If you go into it too long, then it, it becomes something that's harder to come out of. But take a nap. But the, the bottom line is this, we must get our rest by going to sleep. Secondly, secondly, not only should we sleep, but here's a word, and I want you to hold on to this one. We need to learn how to relax. Yeah, yeah, we need to learn how to relax. In other words, maybe relax is not your word. How about let's learn how to loosen up. I mean, maybe that doesn't do it for you. Let's 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 uh, let some of things some of the things that are holding us down go. In other words, just let it go. Some of us are too tight. Some of us are too wound up. Some of us are too serious. Everything is not that deep. We need to learn how to disconnect appropriately. And may I also let you know this, we need to learn that everything is not an emergency. If you want to learn how to relax, here are just a couple of tips. Just at the moment of stress, sit back, pull back, and just try closing your eyes for about a minute or two. Just close your eyes. It has an, a, a way of helping the spirit to calm. Uh, if you need a time or a moment or a technique for, for relaxing, learn to take deep breaths. 
deep breaths that come down from the diaphragm that you draw in air through the nostrils and exhale through the mouth. Make them slow and long and deep. Uh, here's a little piece. Don't tell uh, Pastor McCorm Bindle that, I, that I'm sharing this with you, but we are told that stress can be relieved by taking a little piece of dark chocolate. Yes, yes. I'm going to bring that down. A little piece of dark chocolate. Dark chocolate because it's not as sweet. It doesn't have as much sugar. But there are some properties about dark chocolate that seem to be what we call a comfort snack. Um, uh, we're also told that perhaps you want to bend your head over and, 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 and drop your arms and bring your head and your arms in a bending motion below your heart. Or while you're seated, put your head uh, between your legs. There is a rejuvenating movement or uh, impact when we get our head below our heart. Uh, we are told that this, is, this has restorative effects on the automatic nervous system, lessening your reactivity to fight or flight responses. Uh, relax. Take an emotional break. Relax. Instead of wringing your hands, give your hands a nice, gentle massage. Roll a tennis ball under your foot. Uh, maybe if you haven't been hugged, especially with this social distancing and COVID-19, uh, we are told maybe we ought to just try giving ourselves a hug. Just put your arms around yourself and squeeze yourself and love yourself and, and tell yourself that in the power of God, everything is going to be all right. It is all right if it feels good to you. Just grab yourself like, mm, oh, thank you. Give yourself a hug every now and then. And here's my last one. Learn how to laugh. There's some funny stuff out there. Funny things happen around us. Funny stuff happens in our life. Don't take yourself and situations too seriously. Too seriously. I didn't say don't take it seriously at all, but don't take it too seriously. One of the saddest things that I've ever seen are those who profess to be sons and daughters of God who walk around as if they are mad at the world all the time. In fact, they fight. They are fighting to keep themselves from laughing at things that are funny. And I'm talking about wholesomely funny. There is, There are some funny things that have, you ought to just sit back and take a look and, and, and take a moment to remember your own life and learn how to even laugh at yourself. Thirdly, 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 we talked about sleep, getting some sleep, learn how to relax. Uh, thirdly, learn how to meditate. Uh, this is not aimless or mindless wandering of the mind, but this is a focus of uh, uh, settling in on something that brings relief, help, and strength. Uh, meditating doesn't require completely clearing your mind either. You can meditate in as little as one minute, and you can use visualization techniques. Uh, take a trip. Uh, remember what it was like to be on the cruise. Remember what it was like to be with family at the family reunion. Just meditate. One of the things that I've found that when I meditate and I think about God, my, my strength and my spirit is always renewed. When I, when I think about the goodness of God and all he's done for me and all he's doing for me and all that he's doing for those around me and all he's doing for those that I love and who are part of my family, what he's doing for the church, how he is showing himself to be God and marvelous. I tell you, my soul leaps within my, myself. In fact, Isaiah 26 and, and verse 3 says, you will, talking about God, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Now, here's your bonus piece. Here's your bonus piece. And I bring this in. It is critical. In fact, it's essential. We talked about sleep. We talked about relax, relaxing or relaxation. And we talked about learning how to meditate. 
One of the things that the world has lost and mankind has thrown away as a beautiful and perfect gift from God is in order to get rest, remember the Sabbath. Ah, uh, yes, I said it. I said it. This Adventist preacher said it. Keep the Sabbath. Uh, Exodus 20 and verse 8 uh, talks about remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do, you all, do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God in it. Thou uh, read verses 8 through 11 and you'll get everything that God says about the Sabbath. And I'm not talking about a Sabbath. I'm talking about the Sabbath. God himself ordained and instituted this weekly day of rest, relaxation, rejuvenation, reconnecting, and celebration of who and what he is. Keeping the Sabbath is good for your health. In fact, this Sabbath of a business is one of the great uh, jewels that have come out of the Garden of Eden. I take you there because uh, there are so many who talk about that's not for us. That's a Jewish Sabbath. Or that's one of those weird, quirky things of you Seventh-day Adventists. But this thing called the Sabbath does not belong to the Jews, was not created by the Jews, was not created by the Seventh-day Adventists. In fact, the Seventh-day Adventists learned it from the Seventh-day Baptists. There are other Sabbatarians, but the Sabbath belongs to God. It was created by God. It was instituted by God. And God commands us, even right now, to remember the Sabbath. How do I know that? How do you, I, I, I know that it's not a Jewish or Adventist Sabbath. All you've got to do is read your Bible. Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, and there the word of God says, and on the seventh day, oh hallelujah, keep that, on the seventh day. I know that there are some who are promoting that the, the blessings of the Sabbath are, 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 are undeniable, unquestionable, but they simply say we don't have to keep the seventh day. We just need to have or find or observe a Sabbath. I love the Lord so much. I'm going to do just what he asked me to do. I'm going to do what he commanded me to do because the Bible says, if you love me, Jesus says, if you love me, then keep my commandments. Genesis 2 verses uh, 2 and 3, and on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Now, let me make sure you're clear. God is not tired. He's not exhausted from doing the, his great work, grand work of creation, but he pauses and gives all of the universe an opportunity to join in the celebration and acknowledging and worshiping him for the great and marvelous things he has done. Verse three, then God blessed the the seventh day huh? and sanctified it. He made it special. We don't have any other scriptures that talk about any other day that God has sanctified, blessed, or set aside. He blessed the seven days, sanctified it because in it, he rested from all of his work, which God had created and made. When God instituted the Sabbath, there was not, there was not one Jew or Seventh-day Adventist to be found, but humanity in the form of our parents, Adam and Eve, humanity was given this marvelous Sabbath. So I simply say to you, if you want to find rest, learn how to keep the Sabbath while working, trying to get through Oakwood College, that's where I really, really, really learned how to appreciate the Sabbath. I was working uh, midnight to eight and on one job and would come home and sleep. And then about four o'clock, I would be back at the other job and work that from four till 10. I was trying to make money and get some bank, trying to have some funds. And when I got back to school, not only did I have my tuition taken care of, but I had a little pocket change as well. I worked so hard and worked so long that I was ecstatic. I was overwhelmed. I was so happy that when Friday sunset showed up, 
I didn't have to go to that job or I wasn't going to that job. I could have done that, but I chose to observe and follow God's command. I was so happy to know that I had release. I would get rest from my labors from sunset Friday all the way to sunset Saturday evening or sunset Sabbath the next day. I was in rest with God. Thank God for Sabbath rest. Sleep, relax, meditate, keep the Sabbath. When we talk about rest, oftentimes we think we think about the physical. But I want you to know also that when we talk about being healthy and when we talk about these great eight laws, God not only wants us to be healthy or prosperous physically, but he also wants us to prosper spiritually. And do you not know? that there is a spiritual rest for the weary wandering pilgrim. In other words, we have spiritual rest when we rest in Jesus Christ. Here is our foundational text for our message today. It's found in the Gospel of Matthew, the 11th chapter, beginning with verse 28 and verse 29. There Jesus, speaking to his disciples, uh, sharing with them the good news of the kingdom. They have come through and are dealing with some of the oppressive uh, obligations of the old system. Jesus says to them in verse 28, come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden. Do you have problems? Do you have concerns? Do you have challenges? Do you have stuff that's wearing you down? Hear the master, hear our savior, hear Jesus Christ say, if that's you, if you fall in that category, come unto me. And here's what he promises. I will give you rest. Oh, there's no rest like the rest that Jesus gives. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn for, from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest, not just for your body, but you will find rest for your souls. Here, Jesus, in the, in the, when you look at this Greek word, it simply means that Jesus causes us to take a break, to be able to release, to be able to be refreshed from the burdens of this life. Paul understood what this meant, for he talks about this thorn that was in his flesh and how he had prayed three times for it to be removed and that he felt weak from it, that, that he felt uh, less than adequate from it. And then in, in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 9, he says, and God said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Hallelujah. Can you hear what Jesus is saying? That when you are weak, when you can't do it, when you can't go on, when you can't reach beyond the break and hold on, that Jesus Christ himself, your heavenly father, your God, will come and make up the difference. When you are weak, his strength is made perfect. His strength is turned loose. His strength is activated on your behalf. You are never without power when you are connected to Jesus Christ. Therefore, Paul says, most gladly, I, I'm, I'm going to take, take joy in this. Most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Uh, my brothers and sisters, I simply encourage you to find rest in sleep, find rest in relaxation, find rest when you med meditate, find rest when you keep the Sabbath, but most of all, find spiritual rest in Jesus Christ. For I declare to you today without equivocation, I don't hesitate, that in Christ 
we can rest from all of our limitations. In Christ, we rest from our frailty and our failures. In Christ, we rest from our mistakes. Yes, we messed up, but in Christ, he takes it and makes it all brand new. In Christ, we rest from our burdens. In Christ, we get relief and, and release from our shame and our guilt for his, his blood covers all of our sins. In Christ, we get rest from our struggles because our struggles become his struggles. Our battles become his battles. We get rest from fear, rest from pain, rest from sickness, hallelujah, rest from sorrow, and rest from weeping. But I must tell you that there's more good news because when you've got Jesus, you have rest even from death, because if you are in Christ, death is no longer this ominous sentence, this ominous uh, 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 phase of life, but rather death becomes a sleep when you are in Jesus. For did not the Bible say in 1 Corinthians uh, 15 that we shall not all sleep, but that there will be a transformation where corruption shall put on incorruption and, Im and mortality shall put on immortality and we shall be changed. Didn't 1 Thessalonians uh, 4 tell us that, that at, the, at the sound of the trumpet and when the, when, when the voice of the archangel cries out, that the dead, the sleeping in Christ will rise first. Ah, my brothers and sisters, we find rest from temptation. Because when Jesus is in your life, he gives you what you need to stand against all of the attacks of Satan in your life. We are not, we are not held as prisoners to him. He relieves us and gives us rest from sin and from the curse of sin. My brothers and sisters, the eighth, seventh law of health is rest. And I pray that you will learn how to sleep, how to relax, how to meditate, keep the Sabbath, but most of all, join yourself with Jesus Christ. Because there is a day coming when we will enjoy eternal rest. Ah, the word of God is clear. We will have eternal rest from sin and this world. Revelation 22, three times Jesus, God, cries out and says, behold, I come quickly. Soon there, there will be no more pandemics and, and no more social injustice uprising. There will be no more political squabbles and campaigns. There will be no more prison cells to hold uh, innocent and, and to, and to uh, cause and bring about, about, about uh, 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 human indignity. There will be no more hunger. There will be no more homelessness. There will be no more sickness for God himself declares in Revelation 21, beginning with verse 4, he says, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. We're going to get some rest. For the former things are passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, John said, write for these things or these words are true and faithful. You don't have to wait until the second coming to receive the promise and the assurance of this rest. You want rest in Jesus? You want rest in God? Then I simply invite you to come one more time with me. Let's go to the cross. For there at the cross, this blessed eternal rest was provided for every sinner who confesses and makes the bold claim that I've decided to make Jesus my choice. You know my hymn, we haven't had an opportunity to sing it together. Jesus keep me near the cross, 
That's 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 my my prayer song. That's that's the song that reminds me that there is relief and there is rest that is coming soon. I love how the chorus uh, ends when it simply says, "In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest, sweet rest." beyond the river. Oh, my brothers and all my sister, I pray that you will receive and experience rest, sleep, relaxation, meditate, keep the Sabbath, but most of all, turn everything over in your life to Jesus Christ. He promises to see you three. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the rest that you afford us, for the rest that is ours. You have designed us where we are able to go to sleep and rejuvenate and revive our bodies. You have given us the opportunity, Lord, to be able to relax. You have given us the faculties where we can meditate on your promises and meditate on your word and meditate on your purposes. And yes, Lord, you have given us the Sabbath. Thank you so much for setting this time aside where we will come in your presence and we will celebrate and worship you and you have promised to be with us. And now, Lord, we look for that eternal rest when time shall be no more, when the dead in Christ will rise out of their dusty sleep, when sickness will be done away, no more COVID or coronavirus of any type, no more uh, debilitating challenges in our lives, no more suffering, no more pain, no more crying. Would you keep us, O oh God, until the day we find eternal rest in you? But we ask and claim it in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the sweet Holy Spirit, and all those who seek, know, and will find rest say, amen, amen, and amen. What a word. Thank you, Dr. Harris, for allowing the Lord to use you to give us what a timely message on rest. I pray that you all were blessed today. I pray that you and I will not just be hearers of the word, that we'll be hearers and doers of the word. We started with nutrition, went to exercise, dealt with water, then went into sunlight, then dealt with temperance, and then talked about air. And now God blessed us with rest. And I'm looking forward to the last part of our segment of our series of New Start, which is entitled Trust in God. On next week, I want you to invite a friend, a family member, a co-worker, somebody to come in and hear these principles because they have been blessing me and I know they've been blessing you, but I want you to help somebody be blessed by the word of God. Let us pray as we go our separate ways. And I know I'm going to see you again. And I hope to meet you actually in the virtual sanctuary on next week as we deal with the subject title, Trust in God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. We pray that God, as we've heard it, we may be doers of your word. I pray in the name of Jesus that as we go our separate ways, leaving this virtual sanctuary, that your presence will continuously protect, guide, lead, and even more importantly, give us the rest that we need. Thank you for the Sabbath day. Thank you for who you are. In the mighty name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen and amen.